Coco Jones, if you see this, you have some explaining to do. And with that being said, this all started when I got a call from my boy, who wanted me to accompany him to a swanky Hollywood party. He told me that there might be some unsavory characters there and he needed some muscle. And to be completely transparent with all of y'all, I really don't know what he does for a living. But the way he's always looking over his shoulder, I'm going to assume a secret agent or a member of the cartel. Now, I don't know why he thinks I'm some black Terminator or the Negro Bruce Lee, because he's only seen me in one scuffle. And even though I won, I was pretty much on shaky ground the whole time. Plus, I have a sneaking suspicion that Buddy slipped on water when I threw the right hook. But from his perspective, I guess it looked like something out of a Marvel movie. Now, at first, I told him that I don't go out anymore, and he could probably find somebody else who's better suited for the job. But before I could get the next sentence, out, he said that melanated women would be there. And those words hit me like a bolt of lightning. I froze for a few seconds and I thought to myself, what kind of friend would I be if I allowed him to go into such a dangerous situation by himself? So I told him that I would slide to this event with him to make sure that he stays safe. But little did I know that my guardian angel was going to be working overtime because I definitely wasn't expecting what was about to happen. Now, obviously the night came and the moon revealed itself and me and my boy were cruising to the location. It was a cool breezy night and something just felt electric about it. And the moment we arrived, I knew this was going to be something different. This was black Hollywood at its finest from Denzel to Lori Harvey. We hopped out the car and valet rolled over like Chicago PD, which made me feel a little better because what can possibly go wrong? This is a black tie event and everyone's smiling and feeling good. But I knew I had to play my part, so I put my scowl on and started giving everybody that I wish you would look. Now we quickly made our way into the spot and the moment I walked through them double doors, I saw a sea of people dressed in the finest garments. I saw chandeliers hanging up like stars in the night sky and it was like everyone was glowing and deep in the distance I could hear Future's March Madness playing. Only thing off was the giant Eastern Europeans hanging out. Now me and my boy start to make our way down to the first floor and he's in full mingle mode. He's shaking hands, smiling and hugging people. And I'm over here looking like Mike Tyson, which was cool, but not what I wanted to do the whole night. And just when I thought this might be a bad idea, my boy leaned over and said, the girl at the bar is checking you out. So I do that cool thing where I lick my lips and casually look over. And I swear to you, a cloud of smoke opened up and standing there was Coco Jones in all her glory. She was absolutely stunning. A melanated goddess on earth. She had on this two-tone blue joint with a hint of green, which all of you should know is my favorite color. So the universe was telling me it's a go. And my dog already gave me the thumbs up. So I started to fix myself up a little because I knew with her, if you're not going to come correct, don't come at all. Plus, I'm already seeing what type of caliber of man she wants. So I start to walk my way over. And as a waiter passed by, I grabbed two champagne glasses off his tray. And to my surprise, as I got closer, she got more and more beautiful. I mean, everything was in place. I'm talking body was hitting like Tennessee whiskey. I swear to God. And once I got to her, I started to introduce myself. And she looked me dead in my eyes and said, I know who you are. So I was like, okay, Courtney. As I handed her the glass of bubbly, I told her, Coco, just imagine it's me and you and nobody else here. Let's make this our moment. And the conversation started to roll from there. Now, family, I will admit, that my confidence was through the roof because I saw her give Jazz a chance. So when it came to height, I knew I was Gucci. Also, the connection we had was beautiful and we were having periodic moments of silence just to savor it. But I knew I had to get her number, so I started reaching into my pocket. And with one swift move, she grabbed me by the tie, pulled me in and put them pillow soft lips on your boy. It was the creme de la creme of kisses. And I'm not gonna say that there was some tongue action, but there was definitely some tongue action. Your boy Renan was on cloud nine, but just my luck, I heard the breaking of glass. And as I quickly spun over to look, I saw my boy in a headlock, all thanks to those Eastern European dudes I seen earlier. I glanced back at Coco and I saw her slowly shaking her head no, but a man gotta do what a man gotta do. And I ran over to the action and delivered my patented right hook, instantly putting one of the Europeans to sleep. Now that caused the one that had my boy in the headlock to let go and come after me. But at this point, I'm on my high horse because I know Coco Jones had to have seen that. I mean, it was some James Bond type stuff, you feel me? So the moment Big Bruno came over, I hit him with the super left. And on everything family, it had absolutely no effect. I'm talking no damage. Homie ate that thing like scrambled eggs and grits. And the next thing I know, I was being lifted like a newborn and thrown over the bar like a rag doll. 
And to make it worse, the cast of Bel Air didn't even try to help me up. They just quickly ran away from the bar. Also, when I got up, I had a feeling my ribs were broken. Which means I was in a world of trouble because I saw three of the European dudes headed my way. And that's when I knew I was going to have to use my last resort. So I pointed my head to the sky and screamed, 1804! And every Haitian within earshot perked up. They had heard the call of their fellow islander, the call of our ancestral past. And like a swarm of wasps, they descended into the fight, throwing banan after banan and zoklo after zoklo. And I'm pretty sure I saw a guy riding a horse through the crowd holding a Haitian flag. But that could be due to the concussion I suffered when I got tossed. Now during all this commotion and rumbling going on, I was able to make it to my friend and pull him out the crowd. And we quickly made our way out and grabbed the keys from the valet. And by then, every celebrity was running out the door. So we quickly hopped into the car and started to drive off. But then, I saw Jazz from Bel Air down a dark alley handing money over to some of the Europeans. I was in complete shock because something bigger was going down here. And I was just a pawn in this bigger puzzle. Also, my boy refuses to tell me why all that went down. So if y'all see Coco Jones, tell her Renan says she has some explaining to do. Now all y'all go and do the right thing and click on that next video. And I'll see y'all on the next one.